Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty meaning freedom. So you feel free to just run in circles around this building. You feel free to jump and shout and scream and holler. Just whatever you want to do, let the Lord have his way. Amen. Amen. Service. I think we have to make prayer requests this morning. Would you let me know? Yeah, Sister Deborah. that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord God, we know that you have all power in your hand. Lord, we know that you already healed, Lord, but we have to accept those things by faith. Lord God, we thank you, God, for every hand that has been raised. And Lord, you know every heart and every motive this morning, God. Father God, we pray, Lord, that you'll meet the needs of your people, God. Lord God, we pray, God, that we know today, Lord, that there's some, Lord, that's standing at a row, Lord, in their life, wondering which way to go. But, Lord God, we know that you can speak this morning through your manservant this morning. And, Lord God, we are pulling on the body word, Lord, that you meet every need, Lord, that you take the man of God, Lord, and speak to our heart, Lord. Bless our pastor, Lord, in his absent, Lord. And, Lord God, may you bless the man of God this morning. Bless every song that goes up before you. Anoint our musicians, Lord. Anoint the audience, Lord. Father, we pray, oh God, that you have full preeminence yes, today. Oh God, as we could say, Lord, oh God, truly you have spoken to us today, oh God. But Lord, as we hear these words, Lord, God, as your word found its bed in place, Lord, don't let it be a good saying, oh God. But Lord God, your past, our pastor spoke, Lord, not long ago about spirits, Lord. Father, let us realize what we're dealing with, oh God. Father, help us to accept the word and obey the word, Lord, that we may become part of the word, Father. Bless us this we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Church, say amen and amen. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Look at today and say neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. 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 Neighb
a hand clap. Say 
God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have the meaning of the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Let's go over to the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read Ephesians 2 and then I'll give you my text my title. Ephesians 2. I'd like to just read two verses, Ephesians 2, 9 and 10. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself, that in a dispensation of fullness of times he might gather his kingdom. I'm reading chapter 1 on it. <laughs> Let's go over here to chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, one verse. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Let's bow our heads once again. Dear Lord, we give you thanks once again. We've read your word. Lord, that's as far as we can really take it. Sincerely be Lord, I just ask that you come now. Take the service. Lord, may you provide inspiration for us. May it not be regurgitated thoughts of a man. But God, we ask that you would come and make yourself known. Not just in word only, but in power and demonstration. In every heart receives vindicated confirmation. Lord, that the word is from you. We ask it according to your grace in Jesus Christ. Amen. May be seated. I'd like to give a title. The making of a son. The making of a son. And we see here in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1, where God, God made his son there in Genesis 1. And you know, I want to say this before we go any further. You know, fellowship with different people around the message and around the word. And different people have their own perspectives about what's going on. And that's human. Everybody got our own opinion about things, our own perspective on things. And some people look around and say, well, you know, Brother Mike, I don't see anything happening. Things just seem big. You know, that's one perspective. And some people say, Brother Mike, I see God moves in a powerful way. Yeah. It all depends upon who you're talking to. And then it all depends upon what the person that you're talking to, what they're looking at. That's right. But I want to say this, that no matter how you see it, whether you think everything is just sort of dead or everything is just sort of slump or whatever it might be, let me say this, that God's plan is moving just exactly the way that he wanted it to move. That's right. God had a program. God has something he wanted to do, and God is busy about his program right now, and he is just as on target with his program now as he was there in Genesis chapter. Come on now. So what it is is not necessarily a matter that nothing's happening, but perhaps what you think might be happening may not be what's taking place. So maybe what you want to happen is not what's taking place. But let me assure you, there's a whole lot that's taking place. Yes, it is. And this morning I want to emphasize one thing that all of us should be conscious of. God is making sons. Now if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 said that God created a man in his own image and in his own likeness. Brother Brown said that whenever God does something, the way that he does it the first time is the way that he does it every time. Every time. Or else he did it wrong the first time. So we see in Genesis chapter 1 that God was making a son, and the one that we read about there in Genesis 1, that son was given a name, and his name was called Adam. Yeah. And the Bible says that he was made in the likeness of God, and so we have to go back and see what kind of likeness God was to know what kind of man God was making. Now, Brother Brandon said this. He said that Adam was actually not God's first son. He said the first son that God ever made, he said, was back there in the beginning when God said, let there be. He said, what was God doing? He said, God was giving birth to himself. He said the first son that ever came forth was not Adam, but the first son that came forth was called a pillar of light called the Logos. He said it was nothing less than God himself. And God called that being Logos, God called him. 
and my son. And so the very first son that came first was the Logos, which was God himself. Why? Because the Bible said, in all things, he must have preeminence. And so when God made Adam, and he said, let us make man in our image, he was making Adam after the image of that Logos that came forth. A little piece of that Logos came off, and God began to make another son called Adam. So if that first son was the Logos, which is the word, then guess what kind of son Adam was? Adam was made off of the same word. Are you following me? And so whenever God begins to make a son, I want you to catch a pattern here. God always starts off with the word. Because if God is the word and he's going to have sons, then his sons have to be offsprings of the word. But now I want you to catch something here. When God made his first son, Adam, there was no problems. Adam walked the garden. Everything was under control. God gave Adam an inheritance. God gave Adam a hell meet. God gave Adam a commission. Go forth and subdue the earth and multiply and replenish it. God had given him a commission. Everything was moving just according to God's plan. Then all of a sudden, one day, Adam got lonely. And Brother Bradley said, when God formed Adam, he said, back there in the beginning, he formed him male and female. He said, in spirit form. He said, but when he put him in the earth in a human vessel, he said, he formed a man. Amen. He said, and this man found no help meet to help him. Amen. What was the help meet's job to do? Help him multiply and replenish the earth. Why? Because God did this. God didn't want one son. God wanted many sons. That's right. And so this son Adam was walking in the garden and he was lonely. And Brother Master, what was it? He said, God had formed that theophany, male and female. He said that when he formed his body of flesh in the earth, he said he only took the masculine part off of that and put it aside of Adam. He said, so part of Adam was still on the other side. So Adam was longing for a part of himself on the other side. He said, so God took a part of his flesh and formed a byproduct. And then he said the body part was a byproduct, but not the spirit. He said that same original creation where God said, let us form man in our image, he reached back into that creation, got the feminist part, put it inside the woman, and her name, get this, was not Eve, her name was Adam. Because in the original creation, the woman had no identification of her own. Her identification was in her husband. Are you following me? Because the two were truly one. Are you with me? And so the bride is not supposed to have her own identification. If you look at the scriptures, and we're going to look at something this morning, I'm talking about making sons. You notice God never said, I'm making daughters. He said, I'm making sons. And the reason he used the masculine gender is because I believe the bride has no identification of her own. Her identification is in Christ. Just like Eve was. Said in Christ Jesus is neither male nor female, there's neither bond nor free, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to be able to start making sons. Come on now, God's making sons. Yeah. Now, if God's going to make sons, He has to always follow the same pattern. That's right. But if you notice something here in Genesis, what happened when God made this first son? He made him after the word. Amen. He was a part of the original creation where there was no sin. Amen. But let me read to you something Brother Branham said about this first son. He says, in the message the token, he said, when God made the first man, he made him a son. And the son was so corrupt that he listened to his wife instead of God. This word son. That was made by the word. That was made in God's image. Good Lord. That knew no sin. Come on now. That had an earth given to him. That had a help me given to him. That had an inheritance given to him. That had a commission given to him. A man reflecting the creator of the And this man was so corrupt that he listened to his wife instead of God. Creation didn't fall when Eve sinned. Creation fell when Adam sinned. Right. 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 And when Adam sinned, not only did he corrupt himself, but all the creation went with him. Right. And that put you and I in the 
So just being a son of God ain't enough. No. I'm going to say it again. Uh -oh. Just being a son of God ain't enough. Yes, sir. God took that son and put him out. Still be good. God is making sons. I want to say it again. He's not birthing sons. God is making sons. Now, I want you to look at this Adam. He was a man of the word. And as long as he was in spirit form, there was no problem in the garden. Brother Bannon said that he often walked about the garden, he said that he led the animals just like the Holy Spirit is leading the church today. There was no problem. But when he put this man in flesh, this thing right here, come on now! He put him in flesh, he put him in there that he might be tempted. And Brother Bannon said as long as he was by himself, there was no temptation. He said, but in God's wisdom, when he took out this help me and made a byproduct, he said, in God's mind, his providence, he knew the man would fall. He said, but he couldn't make him fall. He said, that wouldn't be justice. He said, but he could put him on the basis of free moral agency, knowing he would do it, but he could not make him do it. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully. This son, when his wife was taken from his side, she failed. Uh. And this son had to make a choice. Uh. Do I go with my wife? Uh. Uh. Listen, who I love so much. So much. Uh. This woman is fresh in my flesh. Uh. She's bone in my bone. Yes, She's the only thing in earth like me. Uh. I love her. Uh. But now I got a choice. Do I go with her? Or do I stay with God?
up again right away to make other sons. He wanted to make another son to replace his first son that failed. Turn me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want to just lay a little more foundation before we move on. 1 Corinthians 15. And let's turn to verse, let's see here. Let's start at verse 41. And I want you to notice this. Our topic is God is making sons. He says, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon. Another glory of stars that differ one star or another glory. Now, Paul is, simple. Paul is a master teacher. Paul is using a simple law of contrast. Amen. We all familiar with the moon. That's right. We're familiar with the sun. Amen. The moon, when it's a clear night, gives a nice light upon the earth. That's right. But it can't compare to the sun. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And the sun itself is a star. Right. But you tell me one star in the heavens that when you're on earth can't compare to the sun. The scientists tell us that there's bigger stars than the sun. But from our perspective, it can't compare to the sun. Because the sun is so close that on a good, clear day, you go outside, Brother Chisholm, it'll start your head. Name another star out there in heaven that ever starts your head. Are you following me? So Paul is giving us a, a, a law of contrast. Now I want you to watch this law of contrast. He said... So is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in corruption. Now he's talking about our body. He said, we have one earthly body, it's corruption. He said, but in the resurrection, in the contrast, just think how glorious. Now compare the moon to the sun. Just think how much glorious this new body is going to be compared to what we got now. Now, this is all part of God making a son. Don't miss this. This is just not a sideline. No, this is part of God making a son. Watch this. He said, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. That is natural, is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so is it written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Watch this contrast. But the last Adam was made a quick in his spirit. He said, so now I'll contrast these two Adams. Yep. This first Adam was so corrupt that he listened to the voice of his wife instead of obeying God. But God went to work right away next, making another Adam that would not just be a living soul, but he would be a quick in his spirit. Amen. A living soul's got life. This is the difference. A quickening spirit can give life. A living soul has life, but a quickening spirit can go to something that is dead and get it life. So this next Adam was God's replacement for the first Adam because he failed. Not because nothing was wrong with his creation. God made him just like he needed to be. But the son made a wrong decision. Right. I want you to get this. That first son made one wrong decision. Right. I'm going to ask a question today. Has any of you ever made a wrong decision? Oh, yes. Well, you deserve the same fate that Adam got. I made many, many, many wrong decisions. But because of the second Adam, listen to me now. Because of the second Adam, I'll not have to ask him for him because he's already asked him for him. Yes, sir. Just like that wife never had to answer for the damage of that car because the husband had already asked him for him. Please watch this. The second Adam. Brother Patterson said the masterpiece that God went right away making another Adam, another son. He said, and the first son was made by the word. He made the second son by the word. He said, how did he do it? He said, he did it by the mouth of the prophets. Mm -hmm. He said, as those prophets spoke, they were literally building the body of Christ. Amen. Their Amen. words made up exactly who he was. When David said, in my, in my, in my hands, in my side, they pierced me. Are you following that? He said, my bones, they stare at me. He said, who was he speaking of? He was speaking of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. 
When Isaiah said he should be a light unto the Gentiles, who is he speaking of? Jesus Christ. Are you following? When it said by his stripes, you and I are healed, who is he speaking of? Jesus Christ. When Moses said the prophet of the Lord my God to raise him like unto me, who is he speaking of? He was prophesying Jesus Christ. God was determined not to have a repeat of the first Adam. Amen. God was determined, I'm not going to have a repeat of the first Adam. That, that dispensation is over. This second Adam was predestinated by election not to fail. Because the second prophet said this, that if he was to dash his foot against the stone, God would give his angels charge that he wouldn't fall. Because it was predestinated that he couldn't fall. Amen. son that came by the word, just like the first son. Amen. This next son also came by the word. That's right. But not the word only. Amen. God took the fullness of his spirit Amen. and put it inside of his son. Oh, yes. right. That it wasn't just the word, but he quickened the word. Amen. Now I want you to notice this. He said, Brother Mike, that song sure finished, it didn't. No, it didn't. God was still not finished making the song. He knows though he were the word, Though he had the fullness of the spirit, you know he still wasn't ready yet for his position. You know what his position was? He was to be a high priest. That's right. Why would he have to be a high priest? Because this son was a cricket spirit, so he had to make way for the other sons that were coming behind him. Come on. He had to make sure that he would not fall so that these other sons would have something to hang on to. Because when they would fall, they got to have something to grab because they have a father. So every other son that was coming was resting on the success of this son. So God said, I got to make this son so that he can fall. So he, gave, he made the word and he put inside of him the Holy Spirit, not in measure but in fullness. But he still wasn't finished. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. Let's, go, let's walk through the Bible just a little bit. I'm, I'm taking my time. Come on. I'm to you. I want you to notice I'm coming to you. That's right. Come on. It's okay to know about the first Adam. It's okay to know about the second Adam. But we got to know who you are. Hebrews chapter 5. Just bear with me. Hebrews 5. I'm still on the same topic. God's making son. Amen. Hebrews 5. Put my glasses on, I'll see it. <laughs> Hebrews 9. 5. Watch this. <clears throat> now, look at verse 5. So Christ glorified not himself to be a high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art a son, I have begotten thee. Now, I want you to notice something. Jesus Christ never asked to be a high priest. That's right. <clears throat> he never even asked to be a son. Right. God made him a son. Yeah. Right. The first Adam never said, I want to be your son. Amen. God made him a son. Right. We're going to get to that in some moment. Amen. But I want you to watch this. Look at verse 6. And he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever yeah. after the order of Melchizedek. Who said that? God said that. Yeah. Amen. 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 What was he doing? The prophets were speaking forth the son that was coming. Yeah. I want you to watch this. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Did you just read the Bible say? Yeah. He had crying and tears. Yeah. Strong crying. Yeah. I ain't talking about like last week.
Let's keep reading. Uh -huh. He says, though he were a son, let me back up verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, now remember, Adam's problem came when he was in his flesh. That's right. Now he's in the staff. Right. So God had to put another man in flesh right. to make up for the mistake the first man made. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Somebody had to pay the price for the mistake the first man made. Amen. So God took another son and put him in flesh that he might correct the problem that the first son created. Now I want you to watch this. He says, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him. I want to pause again. Uh -huh. This son had a different revelation than the first son. All right. You notice when the first son failed, we won't find one scripture where he ever cried out, ever father. You don't find one scripture where he ever went to God in strong prayer and supplication. When this first Adam saw his wife falling, you would have thought he would say, oh my God, I got to see what Papa God wants me to do. But he made his own decision. And his own decision let go of the word. But you notice his second son. This is different. He's in the garden. He's about to face the hardest day he's ever had in his life. He knows what the word says. How he's going to be beaten. How he's going to be bruised. How he's going to be scarred. How they're going to torment him. How he's going to be stripped naked. How he's going to be crucified. He knew the word because he was the word. And yet in his greatest hour of distress, he didn't try to make a decision on his own. The Bible said he went into prayer. You notice this son brother. This son got a problem, and he goes he in goes and prays. Pray. Yeah. My wife was studying David. You know what kind of man David was? Usually when David got a problem, you know what the Bible said he did? He sought the Lord. That's right. It said when thus and such happened, David went and sought the Lord. Yeah. Why? Because he knew God had the answer. Yeah. And every true son of God should have the revelation that God around this message, we got men that are called sons, but they don't have to understand and realize God's got the answer. So pastors make decisions. They get churches in trouble. Deacons make decisions. They get churches in trouble. Husbands make decisions without praying and get their homes in trouble. Children make decisions without counseling and get their parents in trouble. And raise the message. Stay on. Now I want you to watch. 
Watch this. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 4. We're just doing a little walk through the Bible today. Galatians chapter 4. How many are still with me? Amen. God's making sons. I want you to notice this. There's so many around the message. I'm a son of God. But I'm going to say this enough. Again, that's not enough. That is not enough. Adam was a son of God. He failed. The Bible said, Israel, my son, which I called out of Egypt. Israel failed. It wasn't enough to be a son. The question is, what kind of son are you? <laughs> Brother Brown said that's where Pentecost failed because they had a born again experience. He said, I give this to them. They are sons, but they're missing the point. There's something God wants to do to more. Amen. I want you to watch this. Galatians chapter 4. Let me get there. God's making sons. Look at what it says. Verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to take your time. I don't take a long time. No, right, 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 right. Did you notice what the Bible just said? That God placed Jesus under the law. Right. In other words, he was subject to the law. Amen. Uh, yeah. He was placed under the law. So in other words, when the Bible said, thou shalt not steal, he, he couldn't steal. Right. When, the Bible, when the word said, do this, do this, he had, to, he had to keep it just like the law said. But I want you to notice this. Why did God place him under the law? Because you and I were in jail under the law. So he placed him under the law to get you and I out. Just like Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the problem to Israel, but when Moses came, he placed him under Egypt. Right. right there in Pharaoh's palace, That's the right. thing that was going to bring his brothers out was right there under Pharaoh's nose. That's right. That's right. And I want you to get this consolation. The reason I'm taking time for this, there's a reason God placed you under the Amen. Why were you placed under this age? Why? Because you're the very one that's going to overcome this age. Hallelujah! Yes. Now that you're born, 
He said, that just puts you in line of fellowship. That's right. He said, if God gives you a tutor yep. to test your character. Uh, no. <laughs> I believe there's many fine brothers and sisters in this message I like that are going to be there in that day. That's right. But I'm not talking about being there when a great resurrection takes place. Yeah. Brother Bama said, that's going to be a fearful time. He said, I don't want to stand in front of that great white throne. He said, God be grace to be a part of that number, and a part of that resurrection. Those are the sons that God are now making. I ain't saying he's forgotten sons. He's now taking those forgotten sons, and out of a few number, out of these thousands, perhaps millions that have been forgotten, there's going to be a few number he's going to make some. And how is he going to make you a son? The same way he made Christ. the Holy Ghost, oh, it was the three and a half years a hard trial. Oh, yeah. What are you trying to do it? God was molding his character. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. He said God can give you the Holy Ghost, oh. but character is not a gift. Yeah. Right. Right. Listen, right. these sons that I'm talking about God's making, he's making character. That's right. And God don't give you character. Oh, yeah. Character is a victory. That's right.
God are speaking to. You know, people say, God spoke to me. God spoke to Balaam. Yeah. Don't think that puts you in those special categories. God spoke to Cain. God spoke through Caiaphas. He prophesied. Are you with me? Amen. God cast out devil by Judas. These things don't put you in those special categories. But we're so concerned about those things. Now don't get me wrong, we should be. Because I want to see devils cast out. I want to see sick healed. But Brother Battle said the mistake we make is we make those the major. When they were always supposed to be the minor. This man here is looking at the major. Lord, what am I doing with the word you give it? Because that's the true measure of every son's character. Oh my God. Let me, let me, let me read something to you. Let me read something to you. Look what Brother Brown said here in the message, present stage of my ministry. He says, when a man stands true to the word, not just in one meaning, but in every meaning, when a man stands true to the word, the time will come when they'll leave it. Exactly. They did it. They did it to our Lord. They'll leave him when he stands true. Amen. Brother Bram said, and I'm going to read the quote to you. There's another message Brother Bram said. He said, you know sometime when God is testing his sons to see how sincere they'll stay with the word. <clears throat> Brother Bram said, sometimes he'll send sickness upon them. God will send sickness my way. He'll send hardships upon me. Brother Brown says, sometimes when a man stands for the word, he'll even make his own church turn against him. Can you imagine being an oddball in this fellowship? The deacons don't like me. The brothers and sisters don't like me. Maybe the pastor even treat me a little funny. And just think, God could be behind me. Let me tell you why God would do something like that. When God was making that great son, Jesus Christ, I want to tell you a little bit about the day he had when he went to Calvary. First of all, when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, his own brothers went to sleep on him. That's right. He said, pray me a little while, brother. I'm having a hard day. Pray me a little while. And he went into prayer and he came back and looked at his brothers. Sleep. He said, brothers, wake up. Don't you understand? I don't answer a whole lot of you, brothers. I don't answer a whole lot of you. I need you to pray for me. Pray for me. Yeah, Lord. We went to Lord. We got you. Come on, brother. Pray for the Lord. Lord, go back to pray. Come in again. I'm trying to show what kind of thing he's doing. And then while he's trying to pray through in the garden, Brother Brown said, God takes the anointing off of him. That power he had to speak to that fig tree. That power he had back there with Lazarus in the dead, and he threw his shoulder back and said, Lazarus, come forth. God took that anointing off of him. And he goes back to his brothers and goes, and then all of a sudden now, here come soldiers with spears. Amen. And they want to take him to arrest him. Amen. And he knows what's going to happen when he gets to the judgment hall. Oh, yeah. They're going to start beating him. Right. Punching him in the face. Yeah. Spitting on him. Yeah. The Bible says pulling the hair from his body. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And he's got to endure all this, not as God. He's got to endure all this as a man. Yeah. your God. Just curse your God. Just deny the word. And the whole while, this son has such a character. Yeah. Yeah. He has Amen. such a character yeah. that despite all things, he held to the word. Yeah. And when he stood in pockets, judgment hall, and those men stood there, he was whooped. 
It makes life hard. Amen. But it's a victory. Amen. I want you to watch this. <clears throat> For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received, there it is again, spirit of adoption. Amen. Whereby we cry of a father. Amen. The spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. If children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, there it is, Amen. we may also be glorified together. Amen. If you are led by the Spirit, believe me, you're going to suffer. Yeah. You have to give up things you want. You might have to give up things you think you need. You're going to give up friends. Are you following me? Brother Brown said like this. The guy asked me time. I said, Brother Brown, how do you get to the top of that mountain? Brother Brown said, by following the bloody footsteps. Yeah. You know what following the bloody footsteps means? Take up your cross okay. and follow him. Amen. You know what Christians don't like doing no more? We don't like the cross. We don't even hardly hear it preach much anymore. No. We don't want to talk about the cross. That's painful. That's shameful. That's suffering. But that's power to God. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. There he is again, talking about sufferings. Worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. In other words, we've got to go through the suffering yeah, right. to get to the glory. Yeah, right. yeah, Listen. Right. For the earnest expectation of the creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. That's true, brother. Brother Brandon said this manifestation could not come at any other age. Amen. Right. The word had been given in part. I'm saying this in closing. I'm closing my Bible. Those are my notes. Brother Brandon said this manifestation could not come in any other age. Amen. Other than this age. Amen. Do you know why that was? In order for God to have that character in the 2,000 years ago, it could not happen until there came a man that was the fullness of the word. Yeah. Amen. Adam didn't have the fullness. Paul didn't have the fullness. That's why the church ages would go down in the darkness. But in his last days, just like God made sure that that second Adam had all he needed to withstand the wiles of the enemy, in his last day, God has done two things. I want you to get this. He's opened up the fullness of the word in the seven seals. Yes. And Brother Brown said he sent back the token, which is the literal life of Jesus Christ. Amen. That he might now have sons ready for the same manifestation. Now, I want to say this in closing. Come on. You're going to do more than what Jesus did. Yes. That's right. Yes. He said yes. it. You know, Brother Brown used to say a lot of times, he said, the Bible said, greater works than you see you do. Yes. Right. Brother Brown said, oh, it's going to be greater works. Yes. Who can do greater works than Jesus Christ? But in 1964, when he preached alone, Brother Brown called Revelation. He said, for years I said more. He said, but the Bible doesn't say more. It says greater. Great. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on. He said, in my own ministry, he said, I did more works than Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. Amen. He did through my ministry. That's right. Not me. He did through my ministry. Amen. Amen. He had more success in my ministry than he had in his own. That's right. He said, and in my ministry, he allowed there to be squirrel speaking. He said, well, there was nothing before. He said, Jesus Christ never did that. That's right. He said, Christ took already created substance, and he said, and then he was able to transform it. That's right. He took a tree and cursed the living tree. Yeah. He turned water into wine. He said, but in this day, where there was no creation, out of the lips of a sinful man, he was able to speak and there it was. And that kind of power can only be given to the right kind of character. Oh, it takes hard suffering yes. to mold that character.
woman said, Brother Brown, he said, she said, I try so hard to serve him, but I got so many mistakes. Oh. And Brother Brown says, Sister, it's not your mistakes he's looking at, That's but right. he's looking at your heart. Oh, God. And he said, What is it that you want to do? If you don't have that kind of heart right now, where you're earnestly <laughs> giving what you've got to Jesus Christ, then I would suggest right now you make a decision. Listen to me carefully. Brother Brown said there was a car suffering, and he reached in his pocket. Yes, sir, brother. And he pulled out a sheet of paper, and the paper said, where will you spend eternity? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. If the Holy Spirit were here to ask you that question right now, what would that you mean? Oh, Where God. would you spend eternity oh, if you God. would die right now? Is there enough peace in your heart that you'll know that when you open your eyes, you'll be in the presence of Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus. It's easy to sit around where the word is being preached. But if we're not taking it serious, this is the worst place you could ever be. Oh, oh, God. If you're not taking the word preached seriously, this is the worst place you could ever be. And I'm going to ask every head by. If you know in your heart that you need something more from Jesus Christ, raise your hand. Hands up everywhere. My hands up too. You know what I want to say this in closing. You know the beautiful thing about these sons? God is making them. You're not making yourself. Amen. God is making you. I want you to listen to us. The Bible said that he's a very present help in the time of need. Yes. I don't know what you need. But I know one thing that we all need, and that's more Christ. Help us, Lord. With every head by, you pray to him. As sincerely as you know how. Yes, Lord. To say, God, I need more of you. Lord, I need more of you. If you got a problem with temper, say, God, I can't overcome this temper. I need your help to overcome this temper. You got a problem with spinning. You just can't seem to get enough. This material thing has always got your pocket in trouble. And say, Lord, take this fear of materialism away from me. Hallelujah. Because I don't want it, but it's just like a drug. A drug dealer, a drug addict just can't give up drugs. Something has to deliver him. Mm. <coughs> True sons of God need deliverance too. We carry things and we carry things and we carry things. And after a while we get to a spot that we think carrying is just the way life is supposed to be. I'm just supposed to carry this. When the Bible says come before him and lay your cares at his feet. Cast your cares upon him for he carries for you. Every head bow. Dear Lord. We just want to thank you for your grace. Yes, Lord. Lord, I know we fall short many times of what you call your sons to be. But Lord, I thank you for the word that you said, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. That you may boldly say, the Lord is my help, and I'm not fear what man should do unto me. Lord, there's men in this building that need help. I need help. And Lord, I just try to place this as sincere as I know how. I'm just asking, Lord, one more time, may your great reign and grace, may it rest upon our hearts, not just upon our heads, but may your hand of grace rest upon our hearts and take away every contrary thought. Yes, Lord. The little callous spots that Satan has built over the years have yes, become hard again. Yes, Lord. You gave us a soft heart, Lord, but now they're becoming crusty. God, will you move away the scams? Will you move away the cross? Yes, Lord. God, will you give us a fresh anointing, Lord, that it'll be our pleasure to come into the house of worship. Yes, Lord. For we'll feel your anointing when we sing. Yes, God. We won't sing just because the song is loud, but we'll sing because we feel it. Feel it in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Feel it in our soul. Yes, feel it all over me. Yes, Lord. God, would you restore it to us? Lord, we're saying as your children, we need your help. Lord, we commit all these souls unto you. We ask in Jesus Christ's name.
as we leave this place this day, Lord, don't let it just be we've been to church, Lord. Lord, there's reality. There's power behind the word, Father. Lord, you didn't brought your servant for hours down the road just to bring us good information, Lord. Yes, Lord. But you brought us true word, true facts, Lord. Yeah. Father, may you keep him, may you guide his family, Lord. And we that have an ear to heal, God, yes. may we hear, may we obey yes. that which we have heard, Lord. Yes. I pray, God, as we leave this place, Lord, but never your presence, Lord. Yes. May your words always found good place, good ground in our heart. And always let our words be seasoned with salt, Father. This we pray. Bless every heart that visit today, everyone that was here today, God. May you go with us, Lord, until we all meet again. Let us quietly, quietly leave the sanctuary. God bless you, and we'll see you tonight.